Welcome to Talks and Sips, guys. We're back, baby, and it's a new season, new guests, new craziness. I am your host, aka J Fox. Uh, my real name is Jessica Cisneros, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't sound as cool. So for now, we just go as J Fox. Yeah, that's me. And um, we have a guest today. She's she's pretty awesome. A friend of mine from uh, in the past, a, a time ago, but. Like I said, we're here for the next, who knows, maybe 45 minutes to get you through your ebbs and flows of another sip-worthy week. All right. Who you is, girl? Who am I with? Who you is, girl? Angie! Angie. Her name is Angie. Uh, where, how do we know each other, Angie? Uh, let's see. So we both worked at Sender One uh, for how long? Like two, three years? Yeah, probably the same. Yeah, and we opened together, so it was nice because he was there like at 5.30 in the morning, and then <sighs> I worked facility, so I was there like early in the morning too, so we you had were there like at time eight. to like, yeah, we got like time for the chisme, you know, it was like, okay, and cafecito time. Cafecito time. That was my favorite, honestly. Like, <laughs> I hated waking up early. I hated being in traffic. I hated all of that part of it but I loved when you guys came in and yeah. we already had coffee ready and it was cheese my time it was chill it took <laughs> us forever like I mean working in facilities dude like it took us forever like it, you need the coffee time before you start because it's like you know you have to plan your day and do all these things it was like we had a really good morning crew on was it Thursdays or Wednesdays Wednesdays I don't know I were I opened a lot though so I guess I'd I'm like a cheater I'd be having cafecito with everyone <laughs> <laughs> you guys everyone, but that was fun. Yeah, it was so fun. Well, okay, so for those that don't know, we worked at the climbing gym, like Angie said, but what did a morning look like for you guys in facilities? Because no one ever really, like, you know what the route setters are doing, you can see it. You know what front desk people are doing, you can see it. So what was, like, a, an average morning for you guys? A morning. Basically, we would come in, and there was, uh, like, a spreadsheet of things that needed to get done, so it would range from everything, like, Checking the electrical in the sauna to like fixing a wall or a hole or, you know, painting a room to like plumbing issues. And it was just kind of like, it was intense. There was always something to do. And then we had like private tickets. Like if something was wrong in the gym, then the employees could leave us a message to take care of things, like depending on how uh, urgent the matter was. Mm. So I did get to do a lot of that. So that's why like, you know, you needed to have cafecito time to like, Get you into the day. Yeah, and like see what you had to do for the day. At the time, was your boss Jason? Yes! Jason! <laughs> my favorite boss of all time, dude. He, that boss was boss. Oh my God, talk <laughs> about hot tea revolving Jason. Maybe we'll get to that at the end, though. Mm -mm -mm. I know! Ah, we don't work for that company no more. Ah! No, <laughs> no, but um, no, you're totally right. And I love that because you're like five foot nothing. You're the same height as I am. And you're like a mommy and you're working in facilities, like fixing all sorts of stuff, running around with hammers. You're like little like Bob the Builder. You're Angie the Builder. <laughs> I was Angie the Builder. Mm -hmm. uh, but you transferred over. So now that I was here and like I moved to Peoria, Illinois, so I'm really far away. So you're but far away. Yeah, so the climbing gym here, I was a setter. You so. were a setter? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, so it was like, I'm not even a good climber, but I guess they really needed people. So I went oh. to a workshop. It was like, oh, you get to do, like, pick a problem and, like, you know, they teach you the basics. And they were like, oh, you did pretty, like, you did that pretty quick. Would you be interested? And I went <gasps> for an interview and they were like, yeah, you're hired. Oh, and amazing. That job, dude, that job is brutal. Like, brutal. I was doing that for, like, nine months. You were but a route okay, setter so you, for nine months? Yeah, dude. And it's like, okay, so, like, back in at Sender 1. See, I get confused because the, the one here is First Descent and the other one is Sender 1. Oh, my like, gosh. Know? We got to get more creative with our names. Everything is, like, touch the stone. Yeah. Ascend. <laughs> uh, what's another one that's, like, uh, hot, oh, boulders. <laughs> We get it. Stone, stone rock. Stone rock. Stone, something, stone wall, stone wall. I'm like, what, uh, what is this? Like, get better with the names. Yeah, because I keep getting tongue twisted. So I remember 
I was at work here and I answered the phone and I was like, thank you for calling Sender 1. And I was like, <gasps> no, that's the wrong place. So it's I was like, oh, 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 thank oh, you oh. for calling us at first. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, five minutes again. <laughs> yes, I too. Yeah. Oh my but, gosh. Oh yeah. So going back to that. Mm -hmm. So you know how the setters at our gym, when we worked together, they had the boom lift. So they had that nice machine that, you know, takes you up and does oh, all Oh, uh, yeah. They so, had the, what is it called? The, it's a lift. Boom lift. Yeah. Get the get boom, boom lift. The boom but lift, yeah. Here, we didn't have one here. So. Oh. What? Just picture. Do you remember doing the, the uh, auto belay mm -hmm. um, rescues? Yeah. Like when somebody would let go of the auto belay on the towers? Yeah. Picture that, but with 50 pounds of bucket, like hauling on you. What? Like, oh, yeah. No. You have to use the ascender. You have to use these pulleys. And you have to set up two lines. And it was just, it was intense. How much were and they you paying have... you to do physical fitness eight hours a day? Dude, like not enough. It was very poorly paid. Oh. I mean, it was a little, no, it wasn't like, it was like 15 bucks an hour, I think. And it's, that's. Compared to the work that you do and how much it takes on your body, it was not enough. No, man. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, they need to get paid a lot better. Yeah, or figure something. Like, if you're not going to pay me more, then get me a boom lift, bro. <laughs> like, Get the better tool. Get a better tool. I should not be climbing this 30-foot wall, 40-foot wall with a bucket of plastic that's super heavy, made out of cement. Like... No way. Yeah. That's insane. No, and then it's like, so I work with a bunch of dudes and like, I think the shortest was like five foot nine. Oh my. And their wingspans are ridiculous. So like, you know, you don't want to make a route that's like straight up and down. Yeah. So, you know, you have to kind of like curve it and make it fun. You're getting so the zigzag all on. guys are just like, yeah. So they're like with their drill, just like, you know, doing one of these. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm like, bitches. No I bring myself to something and like, you know, it's, uh, yeah, that was not. It was not the best. I have a lot more respect. Not that I didn't have respect for the setters, but man, <laughs> you have to be in your 20s when you start that job because geez. Yeah, and I feel like it's a progressive build, right? Not just a progressive build on the wall, but on your body. Like you're slowly and steadily becoming very swole as a route setter. Yeah. I feel like you just have to get stronger and better because otherwise you're like getting tired and abused the entire time. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's a very... Like, if I would have started younger, I think my body would have been more accustomed. But I thought I was pretty fit. I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I climb very often and yeah. hike. But, um, yeah, I was not as... I, I was not in the shape I thought it was. Uh, I that's was okay. I really overshooting. I feel like you were in shape, but you were in a different type of shape. <laughs> I'm in Midwest shape. Yeah. So, I got here and... Are you having a lot of pizza? Car... Oh, my God. Bread bread like it's it got so i moved here in the winter and it was really cold so mm. all i wanted to do was eat and then i'm i wasn't very accustomed to the weather because you know i lived in the desert then in la and now it's like you know it gets really cold it, yeah so my first two winters here i was like i'm not going outside i'm gonna stay in and i do not want to be out but then now it's like, not oh, today you know, it's like, satan <laughs> yeah it's like 38 degrees and i'm like walking out without a jacket and i was like what's happened to me we are acclimatable creatures uh it is yeah, i didn't think it would happen it's crazy it i had a uh, i know so many people that are living in la right now that are from illinois in different places and they're like yeah it's because it, it's been raining a lot over here and everyone's like are you guys yeah. drowning i'm like not yet it, look it's refreshing guys uh it's it's refreshing because we haven't had rain in so long and so everyone i think i saw a meme speaking of memes that um someone goes like oh uh so la is basically seattle now right because it's rained for four days in a row the people <laughs> and they're like no it's been so freaking cold like what the heck and so yeah but it's like but it's like you know you used to you grew up in a land of really really cold weather and having a shovel snow like all of a sudden you're too good for this rain it's too cold for you like it is crazy how adaptable we are especially when it's the other way around and i'm like oh i'm really digging this weather like you know but i remember like even in la i wear a puffy coat once in a while because i was cold right and, and so like, oh. the rest of the world laughs at us with our puffy coats in la <laughs> yeah and then i don't know like i don't know if your family does this right but like my family's very we're very hispanic right? yeah so they'd be like you know they they have these like kind of 
They're not superstitions, but just kind of like folk legends. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, so like you don't step on the on the floor. Not like, on the cold tile on. floor. Not when you no, wake up. <laughs> you get super sick, or you get cold sores. And <laughs> oh, the other shit, one cold sores. You, yeah, I don't know. And then the other one is like if you step out from the house into the cold and you're not covered up like you can get bell's palsy i'm like that's not a thing or like no. you're gonna get so sick and i'm like none of this is true but you grew up with it isn't like, okay. isn't the palsy isn't that like a nerve thing <laughs> yeah and it's like it's super random like you get like a like you like freeze a, i don't know if it's a sore yeah so like it's a nerve goes off and then like one of your sides of your face droops oh my gosh that's so funny and that's from that's from that moment that you were walking on that cold ass house what you how get dare you. how dare you it's like you should have covered your chest you should be covering your chest you shouldn't be leaving the house with your hair wet like it's it's how dare you have soup in the winter this is a summer <laughs> meal <laughs> i know it's like what's wrong with you yeah there's all these like crazy legends that i didn't realize how like ingrained they get because like logically you're like this doesn't make any sense this is not true but 100 you with it so much that it's like oh my god i'm not supposed to do this it's like ah. <laughs> right then you then you're like i'm a grown woman i can do this i can do this speaking of like traditions and being like latinas and all that stuff and uh josh and i have been watching um modern family never seen it before have you seen it yeah. okay I'm like twice. Wonderful. I'm barely, we're season two or three, not quite sure yet. But we love when Gloria is like, no, in my family, in my country, la, 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 right? To to, uh, yeah. to her husband. I always forget his name. I want to call him Al because of uh, love and marriage. Love and marriage. I know, but, right? That's like, that's marriage. Or not love and marriage, sorry. It was, uh, uh, what was the show called? Married with, married with children. children. And I want to call him Al, but I know he, Classic oh my God. Man. But how she's like made him, uh, there was a point there where she made him like hold on to all these sneakers or like yell at the chicken as she's as he's preparing it for a meal and just like all that <laughs> stuff and i'm like it it's it's, it's real to someone it's out so there funny. you know <laughs> uh well like new year's just came up and i remember like when we would go visit my grandma in mexico it was like we had these little rituals so mm -hmm. like if you wanted to travel for the year like you pack a suitcase and you run around the block oh my and then God. you know the color of your underwear mattered yeah. and what was the other one it was like oh you had to burn a candle the same color and then i don't know if you guys do the 12 wishes with the 12 grapes yes we do the grapes like, when the countdown begins shove them in your mouth yeah you're like, and it's like when you're young it's like oh this is dumb and now that i'm a grown-up i'm like i want my kids to know right this. you're right you're like yeah so it's reminding me uh because we had to do the grape thing too and and it's just so funny for everyone else but did you like when you were sick um outside of the vaporu and the sprite and the sopa um like if you ever had a tummy ache did your abuelita or your grandma or anything anyone like that uh figure in your life did they put baby powder on your back give you a little nice massage and then yank on your skin with all of their might and they called this no. yeah they called this quebrandote el empache so like breaking your sickness or 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 whatever is like keeping you stuck and so they would grab like th they would massage you felt so nice and then pull pull, grab you. like this and pinch like you're about to do a pinch at a climbing gym <laughs> and just yank on your back <laughs> hey you know what they might have like been hitting a nerve who, and it's like you never well you know. could hear like the clack Clack, clack. And you're like, what's even doing that back there? I didn't know my body could do that. <laughs> like something's broken. And you know what? The crazy part is that you actually felt better afterwards. And you're like, I don't know if it's because I'm experiencing new pain and new trauma and my brain is redirecting to a whole different place or if I legitimately feel better. But okay, Tia. Okay, Grandma. <laughs> you're like, just do whatever you're going to do. Right? I'm willing to try everything once. Right? And, and I love it. Okay, uh, you brought in something really, really fun that I want to check out. Uh, and and that is, what's, oh, hold on. Ha, are you sipping anything by any chance? So I used the mug. Yay, I love it. So what you sipping? I'm actually sipping on lemonade and LaCroix. So I mix them together to make like a sparkling lemonade. Lemonade and LaCroix. Okay. Yeah, nice 
but I'm out of clean cups. So and tequila? Like, no, I'm kidding. I know, right? Just put it on there. I'm dry November, dry January. Are you dry I'm January? Dry. I actually don't drink. Whoa. Oh, you know what? Why am I surprised? I actually, you were sober even when we used to work together, right? Like, you've been sober forever, it feels like. Yeah. Well, I took, like, my first winter here. I was, like, having the blue. So I was like, I'm going to have a little wine. But then I stopped again. I was like, yeah, this isn't worth it. Yeah, the wine, the wine be like, uh, I don't know. It makes me sad. It bloats me. gives me a headache. I cannot get behind wine. I'm sorry. I'm not a wine lady. I can't, I can't be like... Oh, I'm getting hints of hickory smoked barbecue. Like, it's, I don't get it. <laughs> this smells like a summer breeze. <laughs> what is this lavender tasting uh, uh, amber cinnamon? Just fucking elementals. <laughs> Tastes like, what was it like? Taste earthy. Like, what does that mean? Are you licking? Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Where are you getting these descriptions? Like, were you pregnant or picking the plaster off your wall? I wish this tasted like a hot cheeto, the inside of a hot cheeto bag. It does not. I know. <laughs> See, that's another thing that goes away with age, like being able to eat takis and hot Oh my and like, no. gosh. So we're going on another super tangent before we go into drinks, but uh, uh, into the whatcha sipping. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, dude, the other day, I haven't been having hot Cheetos. Uh, do you know what turbo, I can't even say, turbo, turbo flamas. <laughs> do you know what turbo flamas are? They're, yeah. they're, yeah, they're the corkscrew hot Cheeto, basically, that has very limey taste to it. And I had some on an empty stomach, and, and I don't know why I thought at my age I could just be like, yeah, I'm going to eat three-fourths of this bag <laughs> and burn my intestines, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bro, but let me tell you. The whole staple of like Mexican or like most candies in Mexico are all like tamarind and chili. So it's like. It is. You know. It is. Yeah. Like, yeah, I tried eating a pulparindo and I was like, nope, that's not going to happen again. Yeah. You get like wild and gas and it hurts. <laughs> but okay. So you, <laughs> you're having, <laughs> you're having lemonade uh, with, with LaCroix, LaCroix. Is it LaCroix or LaCroix? LaCroix. 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 <laughs> what is that band? I don't know. <laughs> Counting Crows. One of our other coworkers used to call it LaCroix. And I was like, hey, and that kind of stuck. So sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, we forgot the LaCroix. And I'm like, yeah, that's not a good idea. And just, LaCroix. I like LaCroix. It just points out how pretentious his drink is with LaCroix. Yeah. LaCroix. Like Felix used to say, he was like, it tastes like TV static. And I'm like, <gasps> dude, I have never heard a better description. Then it tastes like TV stuff. That's incredible. I guess you have to be like a certain age to know that. He's a wordsmith. You know, not that you liked TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, God, yeah, so cool. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> he never said much, but when he said something, it was Let deep. me tell you, years later, he still does not say much. <laughs> we love Felix. <laughs> and he would, he could be your boss today because he's like the facilities man today. No way. Mm -hmm. Uh, I miss the gym. Oh, you got you got to come visit. When are you gonna come visit? LA. When are you gonna visit LA? <laughs> I'm hoping to go, but we'll, we'll see. see. My little brother got a job in uh, San Francisco, <gasps> so I'm hoping he's like you should come. So I'm hoping to yeah make it that way. But not that it's anywhere near LA. But you know. I mean, <laughs> it's closer. It's closer. So even if I was like, I'm gonna meet you out there, it's not driving to Illinois from LA. True. True. But yeah. And then uh, that mug is really cute. I appreciate your mug. It has a little cow. And is the bottom supposed to be uh, like little boobies? Little Ah, oh, so cute. You can milk them. It'd be kind of nice if it had a tap. That like would be incredible. You're just sucking from the bottom. <laughs> I know. I got it for coffee, but it's so big and open that it gets cold really fast. Mm. So I know I use it for cold drinks. That makes sense. That's my favorite mug. I just look this cup right here. And for those that aren't watching and are just listening, it's literally uh, Nicolas Cage uh, in a flat, like Nicolas Cage with a flower wreath on him. And a quote, and, and this, I respect this cup a lot because it's dual sided print where a lot of them are just on one side and drives me crazy. But it says, you're my national treasure. And it's uh, a gift from Josh. I absolutely love it. <laughs> Nicholas Cage is, you know. He is a national treasure. He really is. Even though he's he really done is. some very, very questionable things in his past. Like avoided his taxes. You gotta separate. What was that whole Oh, yeah. Uh, you gotta separate the art from the art. A hundred percent. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, and of course, I'm starting off our We Are Back with uh, Coffee, Coffee, because uh, it's been, coffee. yeah, it's going to be a long day, and I realize, like, I'm a codependent coffee drinker, so if I'm not drinking it, Hi. like, I don't know, I don't know, I'm just like, hmm, it's, it's really hot in here, <laughs> I'm itchy, why am I itchy, oh my god, why am I itchy, uh, and then other things happen, but uh, what's your meme today? My meme today is actually, you know what, I don't know why I was feeling so Hispanic and proud. No, I'm, I'm here for it. Oh, it's, uh, okay, so for those that are listening, it is, uh, a, a basically, what movie is this from? I don't <laughs> This is a movie. I just almost got the rock. When the rock still had hair and he was like in his middle tier of his celebrityism. Uh, Fast and Furious. Is it Fast and Furious? I, no. I think it's Fast and Furious. I, I, I think so. I thought it was one of those movies where he was like babysitting people. But you're probably right. He's in a car. The Tooth, if you, the tooth Fairy? Or maybe. Oh. <laughs> But basically, it's him looking back, and and he's quote end quote he's saying Feliz Dia de Independencia a Mexico, and the girl in the back seat goes, I thought that was Cinco de Mayo, and he looks back, uh, dumbfounded and disrespected, and just like this bitch, this bitch. Uh, why do you love this meme so much? <laughs> I this is like my favorite like conversation with most people. So, you know, being Hispanic like. The, I feel like Cinco de Mayo is just a thing because it's kind of like the Cinco de Gringo or Cinco de Gringo. Yep, yep. But so that particular day is actually like, it's La Batalla de Puebla. So it's like this battle that happened within a war. And we won the battle, mm. which was all about it, but we lost the war. So it's like, why are we celebrating? Like, why is it such a big deal? You know? Yeah. So people get it really messed up and I'm like, yeah, we don't. I don't feel like I can't believe it. It's a participation. Pro, it's a participation trophy. Yeah, like I'm really proud that we won a battle, mm-hmm. but we totally lost that war. So it's like, why is it such a big deal? Oh my! Like, like, why? Why? It's a big deal because we, we can so drink. Just kidding. Yeah, Cinco de Drink. What's a What's a good holiday but, in your opinion that we could be celebrating instead? I'm a huge, huge, huge fanatic of Dia de los Muertos. Mm. Um, like, I have a friend who was mourning, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, people get really worried with cultural appropriation, yeah. but I feel like the other los muertos is really good when you're mourning, like when you have grief, because it's like, you know, you feel these people like in spirit and you're able to honor their memory. And anyone who's seen Coco can see the importance of the day. I love it. I haven't seen Coco. <laughs> I know everyone reacts this way. <laughs> I just like. I saw the picture of the grandma and was like, I don't think I can commit to the emotionality that's going to come. I know that's not a word, but I just like, like, I, I don't want to, I'm, I have, okay. I have this thing about like old people and mostly old people. (laughs) And it's like, don't hurt old people. Don't make an old person sad. Like if they're walking across the street, help them out. It's just old people tug on my heartstrings like no other and so if i'm seeing an old person in cartoon form that looks like everybody's mexican grandma like i'm i will die that day (laughs) it's gonna hit hard yeah it's gonna hit yeah i'll be like uh, i'll be like kim kardashian crying Uh, (laughs) yeah (laughs) grandma (laughs) i think that one is a good one because there's like a whole ritual so you know like you have to set up the three tiers yeah. and then the bottom it's a really good time to at least like sit down and remember people i love because it because oftentimes you know like yeah so it's it's a huge deal like i even got my husband into oh it. yay and, you know, <laughs> oh that's amazing my fellow my wedito so he's got his pictures of his grandma and his great grandma and we put you know our little friends and stuff Aww. so it's gotten bigger over the years before it was just a little table and now it's like <laughs> That's incredible. And I love that he's getting involved with it, too. That's wonderful. Um, Our family, we never we never grew up on any of uh, of that type of ritual or anything. And my family is like predominantly Christian. So I don't think they could ever really, really get into it. But I can respect it. I love it. I think, you know, as a Halloween aficionada, like um, even though Halloween isn't right, is like not to be confused with Day of the Dead, like those are two different uh, existing things that uh, very very nearby next door, but not the exact same thing. Um, not the same, right? Thing. But I do I do appreciate it. See, but to me, it makes Halloween just a little bit 
even on her. Like, oh. okay, it's still on theme for some reason. It's reasons. still like, on yeah, theme. Let's just squish a few more days of Halloween. I love it. You're speaking my language. You're speaking my language. <laughs> I know. Speaking. Yeah, that's my favorite American Halloween. Oh, that one, Halloween. Halloween is like huge. I love it. I love it. I know. It's like you get to be a kid again. That's literally my argument because people have asked me, like, why do you love it so much? And I'm like, oh, it just allows you to play with imagination more. I love. It's like forgiving if you want to dress up silly and do something that you wouldn't be able to social Like, socially, you're not allowed to do. I mean, you are. But then people put, like, a stamp on you, like, fucking weirdo. It's like, what if yeah. I want to be a dragon rider on a Tuesday on a... On a march, in a march. <laughs> <laughs> what if I want to dress like Wednesday Adams on the day? Right. And- speaking, speaking of Wednesday <laughs> Adams, uh, you accidentally just segued onto my meme. Oh, I yeah. See, I love wonderful the Adams family. So the my <laughs> meme. Uh, for today is Wednesday a Wednesday Adams tattoo because I said this year is my year to go back to getting inked I mean I haven't not not gotten inked I got twice inked yes last year but um, I really want to just fill up my arm and finish this because it's been like a long time coming so it's it's time I put in a little bit you know not get little guys get bigger tattoos and start filling in holes in my arm and so uh, I've always said I don't necessarily ever really want to put a fa- like someone's face on my body because uh, you just, that's hard. Like portrait work is so difficult to achieve. And we've all seen Ink Master and we've all seen Ink Master <laughs> Redemption. All the people that get upset because they're like, this was supposed to look like Mariah Carey and it looks like Samuel Jackson. <laughs> it's just like wild. Or this was supposed to be my grandma and it looks like a dolphin. I don't know, man. I, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> The shadowing or like the shading is always so right. Bad. Like I've never seen like a super good. One. I no offense to anyone who has right, them, but like yeah, it's very rare. Like the shading's always off. We're it's not like, throwing what? shade at someone who gets bad shading. No, <laughs> you know, because it's so representative. Yeah, but I've seen a couple where I'm like, that's your grandma. She have a beard or stubble. Well, right, right. What? Your shade. grandma's got stubble. Your grandma didn't shave. Your grandma didn't tweeze out that chin hair. <laughs> I was like, although if anyone ever gets a portrait of me, I want to make sure that they get the real shadow in my upper lip. I mean, gotta be legit. I mean, no, I get it there. You know, it's gotta be. You're gonna legit. get all my sunspots. You're gonna get my crow's feet and my wrinkly forehead. Everything. <laughs> These damn freckles. You know. So this this meme that I found online, and it's fortuitous, everybody, because uh, the new show days are Wednesday. I couldn't. I went from Tuesday to Monday to Tuesday, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm everywhere. So from now on, the show releases on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the week because it gives me time but also uh this wednesday tattoo obviously you know she always has like this face where she's not smiling she has the trentas like me today um and then she has the bangs r.i.p i miss my bangs and then this guy gets you know which is like astounding to me because it's jenna ortega who plays wednesday adams and it's her face but it's not her face tattooed on their body. It's this Wednesday character who doesn't look like Jenna Ortega. Instead, it looks like this uh, African, this little African boy. And it's incredible. This is on somebody's body forever. And it's, I don't know that it's shaded very well. Um, and it's a fully bl- black and, and gray tattoo with shadows. And um, I don't know that you can do a cover up on this. I don't know that this tattoo can be redeemed. It is incredible. <laughs> It's time for laser. Oh, my God. And they say laser is so much more painful. Laser. I've heard it burns. Oh, my gosh. Like, the whatever you're feeling tattoo when it's happening, like a laser is something else. That's why, you know, it's. I find it incredible right now, uh, especially. And I don't know if it's the same technology. I'm not uh, an engineer by any means. Uh, <laughs> but how, like, you can now take at home, like, laser zapping hair removal devices. I'm like, are you giving your, like, I don't know. I'm dumb. So I'm just going to say that now. But are you giving yourself cancer right now in your bathroom? I know. It's like, here's a laser. And we got uh, radiation while we're at it. You know, we just put it in the kit. Right. Like, (laughs) hello, microwaves. Like, there's a reason. What? Or even those, like, microdermabrasion pens. I'm like, that is, like, 
that is really abrasive. Like I would want a professional to be doing that because that's just scraping off the top of your skin. It's like, who in the world is trusting us with all this technology? Why? Why are they trusting us with all this technology? <laughs> like, I want to pay. Like, is, Let me is pay this you. another variation of just trying to get like, uh, you know, stupid people killed? Like, ah, they're not going to read. <laughs> needs the instructions right because we we're all guilty of it i don't read like the instructions ever and i should but honestly it's unfair like i remember when my mazda car when i got my mazda and you guys remember the books that come in the glove compartment that have their own velcro pouch and you're like this this is as big as a harry potter book i'm not gonna read this <laughs> To drive my car, to use the windshield wipers. And you know what? Honestly, maybe that's why people don't use blinkers nowadays. Who knows? No, but it's weird because the only time I've used that manual is when I get like some sort of a service light on and I'm like, oh my God, what does it mean? I'm just like flipping. Right? You're like, fuck, fuck, and fuck, fuck. fuck. Yeah. I'm like, put that at the very beginning and then scrap the rest of it. Right. And you know, it's like pretty much the only thing you're going to use. Unless you've got one of those really complicated cars with all the buttons. Oh my you know? God. Yeah. Well, I mean, those are yeah. like rich people cars, I'm sure. But like Mazda, I do not need your history. I don't need to know that you were founded by a Gregory whatever. I'm just throwing that out there because it's not real. I don't need any of that. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they give you like the little thing. Like it's even included like what other colors it comes. It's like, yeah, because I'm so rich. I'm going to buy this car in seven colors depending on my outfit. Like, wh why, why do I need this color palette right now? <laughs> like, I don't want it. Th yeah, this is, this is not. And I just, the plot just thickened, dude. This meme yeah the plot thickens everybody i thought it was just some random kid but it's a young samuel l jackson what? the face of a young <laughs> samuel l jackson this is amazing so someone on the internet goes when you love wednesday and samuel l jackson <laughs> and then they go is this samuel l jackson's daughter <laughs> it's insane but yeah speaking of things that we do not understand because you know what we're life is life finds a way or whatever <laughs> and and i've realized that there is another set of memes out there that exist and gifts that exist out there that are uh tailored to gen z and as you know uh i am not a gen zer you're definitely not a gen zer nor am i calling you old you are a national I treasure angie <laughs> she's like this bitch see how i went like ah no. spicy meatball i'm very proud of my old age i'm finally like falling into it you know so I'm, like, i love it now <laughs> it, it, you know what when i turned 30 and the wrinkles on my forehead started setting in mm -hmm. i was like well that's a bummer but you know what else started setting in wisdom Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll trade one for the other. And there's always Botox. Mm -hmm. And there's always yeah. Botox. I can hide that shit. You know? It, 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 don't, it, don't, it don't gotta be that taboo. But you know what? The only thing about Botox is if I want to, like, sh move my eyebrows up and down or wink or... It's... That's a common misconception. I actually got... Okay, I'll, th I'll, leave, I'll leave this for the gossip Woo! column here. <laughs> okay. This be my gossip. I'm like, girl, I am turning into a desperate housewife here. Okay, okay. Oh, my God. So we're going to bring that up in the hot tea time. But uh, I sent you a meme that is considered a Gen Z meme. And it I don't know what I'm looking at. And so <laughs> it's like, it looks like it could be like the Babadook's cousin or Slender yes. Man's like pet. Slender Man is what I thought. Or like Teenage Werewolf. Or yeah, like in transition in a shadow. And it's all black and creepy and it has these like crawly finger things. And it says grunge. And normal. It's not even spooky text of any by any means, just white. I don't know what this means. <laughs> Do you have any idea? <laughs> I don't know. Like I mean, I got two Gen Zers, but You do. You I absolutely never... do. Yeah, so that's where I learned what the T is. Because I had no Ooh. idea. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, like he calls me and we just spill the tea. And I'm like, what in the world does that even mean? What is it? It was a couple that? of years ago, but, you know. But, yeah, I feel Girl, like. I'm catching up, okay. Pretty, yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to stay hip and happening. But that makes absolutely no sense to me. Grunge. I love it. Uh, we're hip and we're happening. <laughs> is it like a crunchy Grinch? Oh, I mean, it's grunch. grunch. Like crunch. Oh, is it lunch? Like oh. Christmas Grinch lunch? Or grunge. or is this spooky fella? Is his name Grunch? And is he is he about to lunge into your nightmares? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, or maybe okay. So what if like that symbol actually 
is something else. So it's a sentence, kind of like a little riddle. Oh, kind of like a I riddle. I am awful at riddles. So if you know what grunch and, <laughs> grunch and ghoul means with a period, let us grunch know. Grunch and ghoul. I have no idea. I don't, I don't understand children. Uh, <laughs> I don't get this. You know what, though? You have a better understanding than I do because you got them. <laughs> you know, you as soon as kids. I get off here, I'm going to be like, Maya, what does this mean? What is this? Dude, if they, if your <laughs> children is. can tell us what this means, that that would I be know. clutch. I will text you right back and be like, dude, we should just start using it. We should misappropriate it and just we come should. up with our own definition of it and, and bring it back into life. And be like, you know. oh, oh, uh, that's so grunge. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> instead of fetch, that's so grunge. So, <laughs> you know, my father was the owner of Toaster Strudels. That's so grunge. The Toaster Strudel. 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 Someone yeah. really difficult. Oh, yeah. Our tongues aren't designed for that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, no. Man, like, I recently found out, so, like, you know, the annals of society? Mm, I was no. mispronouncing that. So, you know, it's like A-N-N-A-L-S. Okay, okay. Right? So, I mean, it would make sense that it's annals, but I was mispronouncing that for a very were long time. Were you saying like, were yes. you saying the annals of society? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My husband was like, I think you're mispronouncing. Like, that is not how you say it. And I was like, ah, oh, son the, of a god. The annals of society. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're on the road. <laughs> a bunch of assholes. They're driving down LA. Oh, my god. But, yeah, so that was... That was embarrassing. You know, you try to sound smart and use big words, and then it's I, it backfires on you. So I was like, <laughs> I feel that I'm uh, <laughs> terrible with words, so much so that I make them up as I go sometimes. Oh uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and then like the idioms, those are bad too. Mm-hmm. Like, what was he um, laughing at? Leveling the play field. I uh-huh. would say level the play, level the playground, and he just bursted out laughing. And that he's like, "What?" I'm like, "What I say?" He's like, "No, that's leveling the play field." And, and it, I'm it, like, <laughs> "Right, <laughs> you're a what?" Wait, I'm like, no, I like mine better. I liked mine better. I didn't have to try so hard. Um, I know, not there. Remember or- this. Right now, because LA is super cold, it's like, "Oh, babe, can you turn on the the seated heats?" And it's like, "You mean the heat seaters?" <laughs> the heated seats. <laughs> or like, no the, the heater seat no the seat heaters yeah the seat heaters not the <laughs> what did i say <laughs> see that's why like my husband and i always say just make my butt warm so, can you just make my butt warm just make my butt warm yeah it's like do you want a warm butt and i'm like sure and I'm like Shh. so speaking of it's uh easier booty warmers yeah people that drive beamers uh apparently at some point i don't know if it started happening yet but they have to pay a subscription to use that button <laughs> otherwise it don't work can you believe that that is so dumb that's it's why like, i'm a very happy mazda owner like I hey, have no mazda. do you this still my second one. do I'm you like, still have your little mazda no i sold my little lunchbox all right its Pedro. nickname was bb it was know, really cute. I love your car. You know what the weird thing is? Okay, so that car. Like, I bought that car because it was the cheapest, best in its class. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? All basic. Like, it was, you know, 10000 all out. I was like, I'm happy with it. Paid off. I don't care. So then when I sold it, I was like, I'm probably going to get, like, $2,000 back, right? So it turns <laughs> out they stopped making it. Yeah. So it's a pretty wanted car. I need $5,000 for it. Hey, and I was like, what? Come up of the season. I Woo! know. Like investments, right? So that's what people mean when they say investments. I'm just kidding. But, uh, yes, yeah, so it was weird because my husband... Like, we sold both of our cars because yeah. we didn't want to drive here. Mm-hmm. So we were like, I'll oh, we'll just buy a car when we get there. But he drives a Volvo, and he got, like, $2,000 back. And I was like, damn. Wow. So always buy a Mazda or Toyota. Toyota also Incredible. Goes that's that's so wild, dude, because, like, cars only devalue. And that's all you're ever taught. Like, don't buy a brand new blah, 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 zero miles off the lot because it's going to devalue. It's going to be – and that's wild. Yeah. So I guess the key is to get something – that's like uh efficient like unique gas efficient uh and probably gonna get you know not made anymore what uh what's an unanswerable question that you've been pondering lately you know what i'm really bad at this because i think i have made up most of those answers so so at some point like you get old and you stop forgetting what you made up and what you didn't make up so i'm like what is an unanswerable question (laughs) so the only thing i could come up with 
that was okay so i was horseback riding earlier and i was like how come we, like why do humans come out so helpless and like horses just get out of there like what up world like i'm just gonna walk around and strip my stuff yeah the humans are like oh i'm gonna like they even have the little reset button and it's like what what That's an evolutionary true. help you know, like what? And how, how, as the weakest, uh, apparently, at birth, are we the top of the food chain? How? I know. We would have gotten eaten so long ago. Right? And, like, um, you know who has had it really bad? The fucking turtles, bro. <laughs> the turtles. Was, like, they have it down. Oh, my God. And they, they're born struggling. They're born into the struggle. <laughs> But then they just survive and survive and survive. The entire time. And then we, as the top of the food chain, decide, like, to drink out of straws and uh, have six packs of Coors Light or whatever. And then uh, our wrappers well, and straws end up choking them or stabbing them in the nose. It's like, poor little things. Do they you made want a it. septum piercing? <laughs> right? I didn't ask to be this stylish. It was forced upon me. Uh, Do you but like my necklace? And it's so, oh, and it's like a choker. It's not even a necklace. It's like, eh. it's awful. And that's the thing. It's crazy because they've like really made it through the struggle their whole life, like running in the beach to survive. But no, we take them out with fucking uh, straws. Like, ugh. like of all its weakest points, a straw did him in. A, a str- yeah, yeah. He endured it all. He endured it all. I know. <laughs> like, did you watch that? There was a documentary and it was like a, like animal life during the pandemic so when everything was shut down like wildlife just kind of started coming out so like there were penguins walking the streets and there was like wow. so it was actually 2020 was the year that those sea turtles had like mm-hmm. the highest reproduction numbers because there was <gasps> no one at the beach so they could actually do their little crawl into the beach so it was like the wow. year of the turtle so it's like that is the greatest news i've seen and it was so cute watching all the little turtles get there it was like oh, oh. okay i, I gotta see this us. Send the yeah. link. <laughs> I think it's Help like on Apple. Me. I love but it. But it oh. is the coolest documentary. It was like just, uh, ah. Yeah, and it's it amazing because Apple does not produce a lot, but when they do produce something, it's fucking great. Everything yep. I have seen on Apple is it's like It's fucking just... great. They must have the most intense, like, uh, uh, what is it? Like script vetting person, like trash, yeah. trash, trash, trash. Ooh. Apple TV. I love it. <laughs> we're advertising. It's like free advertising. Yeah, Apple yeah. TV. Free advertising. No, but I have heard only the best. So, I mean, can't. If everyone is saying it, it must be true. Well, yeah, there's some mm. really good stuff in there. Oh, what's your question? what's your second question? An unanswerable okay, so, question. So this one is like, it's very Googleable, And I was like, why don't I just look it up on Google? But I want to know what people think about it. So it's... Ooh. Why is this area called the Midwest if it's nothing near the West? Like, why? We're not in the middle of the West. We're, like, in the opposite direction. So why is it the Midwest? And it was like, it's so Google. You can just Google. I'm like, no, I want to see no. theories on it. But yeah, like, everyone's going to have a different logic. Yeah, I'm like, what, what, why are you saying this? Like, just tell me. I want somebody to tell mm, me. But it makes it, no sense. I'm like... I agree. I agree. I 100% agree. But maybe it has to do with like when everybody was settling west, right? At the very beginning, before they made it to California and different parts uh, of the west. So I'm guessing they might have settled like, because, okay, I guess like their ships came in through like New York maybe and like the east coast and they were just making it west. And they were like, this got to be the middle of our way to the west. And then it was like, (laughs) bam. This is the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a very like obvious thing, but I was like, no, 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 it doesn't make any sense. Like, just change it now. Like, this is current events. Like, you gotta change it. it makes no sense. No <laughs> such thing. Just like the Declaration <laughs> no. of Independence, our national then, treasure. <laughs> I was telling my husband, it's like, oh, but then it would be the Middle East if you named it proper. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we live in the Midi- Middle <gasps> East, and it's like, no. That's not the right one. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That's super tainted to people that would never fly. <laughs> I know, I like, things you cannot say out loud. But speaking of um, things that you cannot say out loud, uh, how how can you describe something indescribable? How would you how do that? I describe- uh, you know, you've heard people they're like, oh, blah 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 was simply breathtaking. And you're like, what does that, what does that mean? So how do you, how would one describe something indescribable? 
This is what you do. You buy a bottle of wine. Okay. And, and okay. you read the label on the back. So oh. Words help. And you say it has earthy then, tones. It has yeah, cinnamon. Yeah, you find the uh, the closest related words to what you're trying to describe, and then tastes you know. like dirt. I lick the ground. Yeah. I lick the ground. It was, uh, tastes earthy. But tastes earthy. Um, I don't know. I, that's a hard question. <laughs> Why are yeah. you making me philosophize here? <laughs> because we're here and we're on our silly philosophy something. train. <laughs> so would this be like, okay, if it's something physical, then you can describe it with like, you know, simple well, things. But it's like a movie that would be really hard. Well, like, like, yeah, some people love to be like, it's indescribable. And you're like, you know, when they're trying to describe, for example, someone who's super emo about stuff or about something specific oh, yeah. and they're like you just wouldn't get it it's indescribable or like it's so meta it's so it's meta like, what the hell does meta even relate to anything what? but are you talking um, about facebook are you talking about uh mark zuckerberg's home home uh, address i don't understand <laughs> what are you saying I know. what hot goss do you have for me today angie what is the oh, tea God. for the hot tea Dude, I was like debating this. Okay, so I'm gonna go Ooh, and say it. Do it, do it, do it. The world wants to know. <laughs> so I moved to the Midwest. And, yes, you know, the Middle I mean, East. Like, yeah, the Middle East. I moved to the Middle East. And uh, as I'll you can see by all my fresh as rugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said those are Chinese. Never mind. I, I got these on Shein. My bad. <laughs> now, these are like legit Chinese. I got them from mm -hmm. like estate sales. It's like oh. a bunch of. All my furniture was previously owned by someone who died. died. So, ah, I do think I'll it's play. amazing that estate sales are so popping. And it's like, this is a haunted rug. This is a haunted lamp. This is a haunted... <laughs> thing, dude, I, I just want to do Olympia every time I get something. I'm like, <sighs> I'm just going to put a little smell in here. Like burn a little copal. Because I'm like, yeah. yeah. There's some things like... Sometimes you go in a state sale and you know that someone didn't want you to buy that. You're like, oh, okay, I'm just going to step back out of here. But see, that's the superstitious Mexican in me. Yeah, 100%. And, okay. <laughs> so I moved here, and my self-esteem was decreasing. I gained, like, 26 pounds. Oh, and, and uh, you know what? I, I, I'm not here to shame because at all. We're both really short, and life doesn't, like, when short people... We just can't. Like, it's hard to walk. We're already so low. I get it. So I understand your I struggle. This isn't to, like, fat shame or anything, but, like, when you're not feeling healthy, you're not feeling beautiful. If you're not feeling beautiful, you feel insecure. Yeah. And bad decisions follow. So, like, it's yeah. all in one. You know what I mean? Mind, soul, yeah. body. Okay, so what happened? <laughs> yeah, so it was, like, it's my internal struggle, I guess. It's not shaming anyone. Like, I find everyone's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But for me, like, yeah, I'm 4'11", and I wear size three and a half shoes. So if I can't wait, I'm going to tip over. Like, I'm just going to, like... Yeah, you know, boop, like, you're like a little the ball. Weight distribution, yeah, the weight distribution is <laughs> not going to happen. And, you know, so I'm route setting, and that requires you to be a bit on the leaner side, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lean, mean, way, green machine, I see. I am, dude. I'm like, I'm a vegan. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> okay, so my self-esteem was kind of low, so I got my first Botox. <laughs> Whoa! I know, Where'd so, you go? How'd you hear about it? Little spot, my mother in law. My mother in law is so freaking awesome. She's like super glamorous. Like she's 60 some and she's like rock climbing, taking whippers and doing <gasps> full fitness. And I want to be that at 60. Hell yeah. Yeah, she was the one who took us to horseback riding. And it was like, what? Like, how do you even. Amazing. Like, when do you sit down, right? So she's go, like, yeah, 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 you know, like. Go mill. Because I've heard so many horror stories of mills and it's like, no, yours is like le too legit to quit. She's like, we're yeah. going to make you beautiful. We're going to give you a majestic time and you're going to have a great life yeah. out here. All right. Yeah. She's, she's the shiznest, dude. So I can't keep up with her. Like, I'm like, holy shit, woman. Like, I cannot. Like, we'll go hiking and she's like, you go in front of me because you're so slow. Plus, I really don't like hiking that much. Oh. Like, it's just, like, that's the thing to do here. But it's like, all right, mm. I'm just going to do it. But, so anyway. I'm going to get really peer pressured into this and be okay with this. But okay, you're self-conscious. <laughs> yeah, so I went and I got myself some Botox. And it didn't last too long. Can we, hold on. I feel like it didn't Logistics just... for the listeners that have never had it, who are curious, who, okay. So, like, <laughs> where, how many injections? How much did it cost? Where okay. on your face? So, Botox is kind of, so if you get like, I also have to get, okay, so backtracking. So when I was young, I had Bell's palsy, 
you know, mm. so it was partial, um, like, ah, I forgot what it is. So it's kind of like when you have a stroke where you have paralysis. And it freezes, paralysis. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I stepped out in the cold and I got paralysis. No, <gasps> <kidding. But, laughs> I'm not believing you. But, no, like it just happened randomly, mm-hmm. but it was like a very slight case. So the paralysis continued, right? So mm-hmm. this side of my face was really droopy. No. And yeah, so this muscle doesn't like lift. So even when I smile, my smile is crooked. Yeah. So I originally went in because it was like the Botox helped tighten up that muscle so that it wasn't drooping. Oh, that's nice. And then, yeah, so it's like, all right, so that was cool. And then they did my eyebrows because like as I've gotten older, like. They start doing this. Them, they push yeah, down. Yeah, my eyelid. Yeah. And I look so angry. I'm just, so I just did like a slight. You have, like, you have RBF. Like, yeah, dude. So it's like, you know, just baby Botox, baby Botox. But, little bit here, little bit there. <laughs> yeah. No, but I also had a lip injection, which is funny because my lips are really small. But then with age and that paralysis, like mm-hmm. they were like super thin. So really? then I had. So with the lip injections, you get an injection, right? So that's like the unit sold. But with mm-hmm. Botox, you pay by units. So oh. each unit is 10 bucks. Yeah, so you just want to go get, like, one small one. Like, if there's something bugging you, like, Mm -hmm. you just do one unit in each area. But it lasts, like, six months. Okay. So it's a little more repetitive. But I haven't haven't done it again. But, um... Because you're beautiful. I just want you to know know. that you're the baby girl. (laughs) Nobody really helped, like, with the paralysis. I was really surprised Mm. because I didn't want, like, I did not want big lips. I just... Honestly, I just went so that they were, like, yeah. even, mm-hmm. you know? Because it was, like, really crooked. And I think you got used to, like, we get used to, like, wearing the masks. And it was like, oh, you know, no one can see it. I don't care. But right. then all of a sudden, you're seeing yourself. And all of a sudden, like, you know, like, all that This stuff is what I work. look like without it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you go through middle school. You gain confidence when you're, like, you know, in college. And mm-hmm. you're like, damn, I'm cool and this and that. And then the pandemic hit. And it was like, I regressed. I felt like a... Oh, middle no. schooler trying to figure out myself and talking to people but you know what but, um, to be honest that you were on every the same journey with everybody else so do not feel bad isn't that like yeah dude i feel like some people took it better i picked up a lot of hobbies but i think it was just like not socializing with people because as it is i'm really socially anxious yeah and uh, it was like it's been hard coming back to that it's like oh it's okay yeah. baby steps yeah. baby steps yeah. Do you feel better about it, though? That is some hot, juicy tea. Um, but no shame. No shame in that game. <laughs> I was so ashamed of saying it out loud. I was like, oh, my God, do you want to hear my gossip? But- no, this. I'm actually so curious because, like, you know, it was such a taboo subject for so long. I think um, it's a little bit more welcoming. I just and even yeah. like people uh, recently, I went I went on a hike, ironically, yesterday. Because <laughs> uh, I was just walking. I can is just walking on a vertical. Uh, and my friend, I had asked her, like, how'd you meet your current boyfriend? Because she's been with him th- three months. And she goes, we, and she goes, the whole time she's talking about him, she's like, here, at this level, and very excited. And then I ask her that, and she goes, oh, we met on Bumble. And I was like, uh-uh, don't do that. Like, it's not taboo. Like, you... People, a lot of people have gotten married off of Bumble yeah. and are succeeding, like... Online dating is totally normal because we do everything online. Yeah. So do not. It's I was only like, natural. Right. So I was like, don't say it like, oh, we met on Bumble. <laughs> it just starts whispering. We met on Bumble. What was that? <laughs> we met on Bumble. <laughs> like, no, nah, like, own that shit. <laughs> you know, if he makes you happy, who cares how you met? Um, <laughs> but yeah, and I feel like Botox, too, has become a lot less taboo than in the past. Um, and that and and I think. Botox in general is so mysterious to me because I know it's helped people out with like just in general like headache and migraine type issues too so it's like yeah. very very interesting it's so interesting to me yeah it's really I mean if used correctly because I guess my fear was like you know I had the facial paralysis and the drooping eyelids but I've noticed like a lot of people have like a palette that they go with so it's like a there's like a specific template and it's like okay I want the lips to look like this I want my eyebrows to look like this and everybody looks the same. Not to offend anyone, everyone their own stuff, you know, whatever. Well, but I was really afraid. Is it the like, Kardashian thing? Of, yeah. Mm. So it's like, you know, I was really afraid of it being like that. But it was like, yeah. no, I was able to keep my face, just make it like it was 10 years ago. Love it. I love it. Just, <laughs> oof, oof. 
I'm really lazy with makeup. I think like the only thing I like to do is like eyeliner. I've always liked eyeliner. Eyeliner, mascara, and concealer. But I have freckles, like a lot of freckles. And, um, you know, as you start aging, like mm -hmm. your face structure changes. But I want to live a life where I don't have to wear makeup. I think that would be the greatest. Just Yeah, I mean, Alicia Keys rocked it. Alicia Keys is legit, dead ass, but performing. But women are like amazing. born with it. Like they're just like that's true literally born with it some of us are not you know because they won blessed. the genetic i always think yeah it's a genetic lottery some people yeah. may get it some people may not like just kind of like how you know like oh, my brother right. has his, his skin condition and he can have a baby one day who doesn't have that skin condition or you know how little people 50 50 chance they can have a little person too or they can produce a normal height person normal or, or yeah. it's amazing it is really just a genetic lottery out there it and really knows. is and it's like even within my siblings yeah. i'm like holy like we all look super different like really really oh. different yeah and, and that's uh, why they're like he's from the lechero he's from the produce man he's from the mailman you know what though because of all those urban legends i'm really afraid of trying 23 and me I'm like i don't want to know I don't oh, want to know if oh, I belong to oh the Oh my god, Angie, like, you're literally no, like, no, I don't no. want to know my 23 and me. I really don't <laughs> Please don't know let it show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, it's you. It's I'm afraid you. of how white it'll come out to me. Oh, <laughs> she's like, like I, don't, I'm like, I don't take my Mexican <laughs> card away, please. As it is, my husband's like, you're, you're not, you're not Mexican. Like you have freckles and you're probably Irish. And I'm like, bro, I lived in Mexico. I am Mexican. You did. Like I was yeah, confused can never take that from you. I lived in Mexico and like, that's our primary thing. I'm like, don't, don't say that to me. Like, no. No, don't take not. my heritage <laughs> away from me. I know. I'm like very proud of it. Try to carry you with me everywhere. Okay. So like going back to those mispronunciations, mm -hmm. what will you call your tia in English? Uh, my aunt. See, okay. My auntie. My husband makes fun of that. No, I call her aunt, but then my husband's like, you mean aunt? And I'm like, no, that's the hormiga, you know? And she's like, it just sounds so weird to me. Like, cause I'm like, no, aunt. aunt? Like an aunt, like an aunt? Yeah. Like an hormiga? Yeah, dude, I'm like, that makes mm. no sense. Cause his, it's spelled A-U-N-T, not yeah. A-N-T. Yeah, so I'm like, aunt. And he's like, it's aunt. And I'm like, Jesse, no. that's fake news. I know, cause I'm like, aunt Angie. Mm -hmm. Angie. I don't like that. I don't no, like that. No, you can just call me Tia. Like, I'm just Tia. Just call just me call Tia. Me tia. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. See, I'm Tia Jesse. It tia works Maria. out. Tia yeah, Maria. <laughs> Maria, Maria. Anyway, oh my God. Dude, it's been so fun catching up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing the memes in today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and with that being said, we're going to move on. It's time for you to listen to your next podcast. That's a wrap, baby. And isn't life just about moving on like you moving on to your next podcast or your next music or whatever you're on to next, whether that's being at the gym or uh, driving in your car or, you know, getting yourself a hamburger or whatever it is. Um, thanks for checking out Talks and Sips and and checking out the memes of the day. Thank you, Angie, for coming on uh, the show. It's very, very cool of you. I missed you. And I just want to say thank you to Sent to Destroy Studios for having my podcast in his personal creative man spooky cave. Uh, my creative producer, Joshua Taylor, who finds all the fun stuff for us and helps me set up extra equipment that uh, you see every once in a while. Or today, it's uh, a computer that's helping us out. But usually, it's another camera and a guest who's physically present but thank you angie for being on the show today from illinois so far away and last but not least by any means i want to thank you guys the listeners for tuning in every single week remember that a rate a review and a like and a subscribe can go and take us very very far so make sure to keep doing that and also the patreon subscribers for being the five dollar donator people thank you for not getting the avocado toast this week because you gave to the podcast you're amazing um and yeah uh if you want to know more just follow us at talks and sips that's t-a-l-k-s-n-s-i-p-s -S -S on instagram and facebook and wherever else that we are <laughs> with that being said i am j fox uh, with two X's and two underscores. Follow Angie at the Holy Free Holy. And it's true. She is a she's a little free holy. Um, and that's it. We'll see you guys later. All right. Bye.